All right, so a, uh, a viewer on YouTube sent me their laptop. Um, it's an HP Beats laptop, and I ran into this problem uh, several months ago. Um, made a video on it. I'm not sure how similar. It, it's probably not the exact same model of HP, but what's happening is the processor is overheating. Um, at this point, the computer is pretty much unusable, um, and I can feel the air coming out of it is room temperature. So in that other... Um, laptop that I came across, what had happened is the, uh, the heat sink that is meant to carry the heat away from the processor out to where the fan can blow it out of the, uh, the laptop, the heat just stopped about halfway uh, along that heat pipe. So the fan in here is really, really trying to get the heat out, but the air coming out is room temperature. So it, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same problem. So what I'm going to do is um, get this shut down and take it apart. All right, well, that took about two minutes for it to actually shut down. All right, okay, well, let's take the battery out. And for this, I should have to take out all of the screws on the bottom. So this one's a little bit different, and it goes in there, so I'm going to set it to the side. Same thing on the left side, I'm just going to put that one by the piece it went into, and hopefully the rest of these are all going to be the same size screw. So that one held in the DVD drive, which should come out. And it looks like this has been opened up before. Um, two screws are missing right here. sure I got all the screws out. Looks like I did. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, this entire piece is going to come off or at least separate. So what I'm doing is just kind of getting down into it and using this plastic, probably nylon spudger, to go around the perimeter. All right, let's see. Lift up. Okay. Yeah, so this whole top piece is going to come off, but there are. Looks like there's a crack right here in the plastic. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take the screen forward a little bit because as I take this off, uh, the weight of the screen is going to make it want to go backward. Lift this up a little bit. And there are cables under here I have to undo as I lift this up. I'm not sure you all be able to see this, but that appears to be for the trackpad. That's the keyboard. Track pad out. Uh, feels like there's some. There we go. Okay. And also, there's a LED cable for the keyboard, and the power button board has a little thing going over there. Okay. Right. This looks very familiar. Um, if it's not the same model, it's a very similar model from HP. Um, so the heatsink 
um, this is the part that actually, you know, the fan is here, the um, heat sink is on the other side, there's the processor, so it's supposed to bring the heat out and uh, the fan blows it out. But the heat sink, um, I'm thinking, um, has a fail point where heat is not allowed to go any further. All right, well, let's take out the motherboard and turn this thing over. I'm just gonna go through and disconnect all the cables that I can see. And it looks like the Wi-Fi adapter is going to have to come off. It appears to be screwed into the bottom of the case. Okay, so that's out. I'll just leave it screw with it. So that's for the left speaker. And we've also got the display cable and probably the webcam connector. All right, I think that's all the cables and whatnot. So it's motherboard held in by screws. Generally what you find is um, the screws that need to come out are pretty obvious, but they should also have a little arrow pointing at them to indicate that these need to come out as opposed to occasionally you'll find a motherboard that has a screw kind of in the middle that's holding on something else from the other side of the laptop that doesn't have to come out. Um, but that arrow rule, rule doesn't always uh, hold up. Like right here, there's not a screw there, uh, and yet there's a uh, an arrow. Now, it's possible that when this was taken apart before, they just forgot to put that back in. But so what I'm going to do is just take out the screws that are obviously holding it in. And I'm going to set them off by themselves. I'm going to lift up on it and see what happens. There's another one right there. So what I do is I just kind of lift up and wherever I feel resistance to it moving, I know there's something more that needs to come out. So this has a cable on the other side for the DC jack, which I'm just gonna lift up and disconnect from the motherboard. Easier said than done. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and take that DC jack out. and it can stay connected. Okay. So this is the part that's, uh, that's failed. So the processor's under here. It gets hot. The heat moves along this heat pipe, comes along here, is meant to go through here into these fins and the fan spins and blows it out. Now the fan is spinning, but the air coming out is room temperature, which means the heat is not making it from the processor all the way over here. In the uh, the previous model that I took apart and found this problem in, the heat stopped right there. Um, I'm In that video, I hooked it up kind of outside of it and I was able to show where the heat stopped exactly. I'm not gonna bother doing that because uh, it's it's somewhere in here. This whole thing needs to be replaced. The other thing I noticed is that the uh, the fan in the uh, in the unit is kind of rattling. So what I'm gonna try and do is get this entire heat sink and fan assembly from HP. And if it's not available from HP, I'll have to try and find one on eBay or from some other seller. So here's the uh, the part number. So it's six. I'm sorry, seven six seven seven zero six dash zero zero one. What I'm going to do is look that up and um, see how much a replacement's going to be. There's other part numbers on, on here as well that might be useful. Right, so I think it's been about three weeks. Um, 
I was able to find a replacement, not from HP though. Um, on the HP website it says that uh, it's just not available from them anymore. Um, so I found this uh, on an eBay uh, listing, eBay seller, uh, and I believe it was located somewhere in Hong Kong. Uh, so there's the fan, and here is the cooler. And uh, this is not new, it was taken out of a, another uh, laptop. So, um, first question is, is it the, uh, the right thing? Um, looks like the correct model number on the cooler. And then, you know, if it is the right one, does it have the same problem as uh, the one we have right now, where the heat just stops right there and won't continue through, and then the processor overheats and runs really, really slow and eventually turns, uh, turns the computer off? Let's we'll see. Okay, so this took like three weeks to show up, so I just kind of put things uh, on top of the laptop, including the screws. I, I typically do this on a, on a computer that I have to wait for parts on, just kind of use tape to hold all the screws together. And generally what that does for me is it allows me to put the screws uh, along with the parts that they go into as opposed to like putting them all in one bag and then having to figure it out later. Okay, so one screw holding in that, and I believe I just kind of had this loosely on. cables undone and I think I just put the screws back in that are holding down the motherboard. those four and I also need to take out the Wi-Fi adapter. Leave it screw with it. Okay. So then that will allow oh I meant one more thing. The, the power connector is held in by one screw. Come on out, and I will leave it screw with it. So it goes in that orientation. All right, let's try that again. There we go. All right, so there's the motherboard. I'm just gonna take the rest of this and set it over to the side. How do we do with the fan? Yeah, looks right. The uh, the part number matches. Okay, well let's take this off. Um, looks like one screw holding in the fan. Pull it off and it kind of goes under this little retention thingy on the motherboard. Oh, it's actually part of it. Okay, cool. All right, so that is the old one and we're replacing this because it's making noise. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and set this down out of the way just so I don't get them confused. 
So this is labeled one, two, three, and four. And you generally want to take things off and put them on in that, that same order. What that does is it helps the, uh, the cooler go down into the processor um, in an even way. Okay, so yeah, again, we're replacing this because the heat is getting trapped here and not following along this heat pipe and not coming out here. So, that away. Right, so here's the replacement. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the thermal compound that's left on here and left on the processor, and we're gonna put on fresh. For this kind of thing, I generally just rub off the, uh, the thermal compound that's on the cooler and on the processor. If you want to be really thorough about it, you can also go back with some isopropyl alcohol and clean both sides. I generally find that to be kind of overkill though. It's not really necessary. Looks like they put a lot on it. And I'm mainly worried about getting this off the, uh, the top of the processor. Um, there's some around the edges, which I could really get in there and clean off, but it doesn't really hurt anything. You want to be pretty careful with a processor. Laptop processors don't usually have uh, little components along the edges, but uh, they occasionally do. And uh, one thing you don't want to do is reach in there trying to clean it off and end, end up like knocking off a, uh, a little component. They tend not to work after you do that. Right, uh, thermal compound. So this is Arctic Silver 5. It's pretty much what I use for everything. Just a very good thermal compound. And I'll put about that much in the middle. I don't go in there and like spread it out manually. What I do is I put the cooler back in place and then allow it as it's being tightened down to spread out the compound. And for this, I'm going to use just a manual screwdriver. So what I do is I go around and do it in order, just getting them each started in the holes, and then go back and tighten them down. So they're all started, now I'll go back and actually tighten them down. Okay. Placement cooler. And I believe I left its screw still over here. Yep. Down and connect its cable. Just like that. Right. Right. So let's move this over to the side for a second and grab the laptop. All right, turn her over. And what I'm going to do is just put this back together and, uh, Hope that uh, this cooler doesn't have the same problem as the one we just replaced. And we'll test it afterward. If you want to see me test uh, the previous one of these I did, the previous video, I'll, I'll link in the, uh, the description of the video, of this video, so you can go check it out. It's kind of interesting. 
All right, so that's in. I just need to go through and make sure that all of the little cables are up on top. Okay. Back the holder for the power adapter or power port. Let's go ahead and put the rest of the screws in and then we'll go back and do the, the cables. Now the magnetism on this uh, screwdriver tip is uh, waning a bit. Um, I bought one of these on Amazon uh, a little while ago. It's got a magnetizer and demagnetizer side. Basically what you do is you just kind of stick it through several times and it remagnetizes a magnet or demagnetizes a magnet if you wanted to do that. So now this should stick better. through and plug these in. This is for a USB and it looks like um, audio jack board. This is for the hard drive or solid state drive. I may contact them and ask them if they'd like me to put a solid state drive in here while I've got it be a nice upgrade for this computer, assuming the uh, the replacement uh, cooler does the trick. All right, that was for the DVD drive. This is for the speakers. This is the display cable, and this little guy here is probably for the webcam. It doesn't have any kind of a clip, it just kind of pushes in. And it's held on its own. I believe that's in. Yeah, it's got some resistance. It doesn't want to come out. Right. Uh, put the Wi-Fi adapter back in. And there's just one antenna cable. Not that uncommon. You just kind of put it over the receptacle and push clip. And it clips down. All right. Um, I believe that's everything on the inside. So that kind of goes like that. And I need to come through and connect up. This is for the power button. Y'all probably can't see this. I'm having trouble seeing it myself. And then clip down. And then we've got the trackpad. Actually, let's do the keyboard first. And then the trackpad. And it's clipped down. 
So I'm just gonna kind of push this back down all around the edges. And I believe this originally had three screws holding it together. There was only one by the time the laptop got to me. I'm just going to put it there in the center and just kind of clip the rest of that together. It'll be okay. By the way, this is a Hitachi a powered screwdriver. I want to say it's about 60 or 70 bucks on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description to it. It's a pretty big time saver. Oop, that shouldn't go there. So all those other screws on the bottom are all the same length and width and all that. This one's a little bit shorter, so I kept them separate. One on each side. Apparently the battery is completely dead. Let's see what we got here. All right, here it comes. So basically we need to check to make sure that it works and that the air coming out of it is warm. It definitely could benefit from a solid state drive to replace the hard drive. Okay, um, I'm logged in. I'm gonna, I'm downloading a program called IDA64 um, so I can check the CPU temperature, but I can feel the air coming out of the side and it's warm. So. Uh, the new cooler has done the trick. I'm just curious to see what temperatures the uh, the CPU is sitting at. I'll put a link to uh, the IDA64 in the description of the video. Um, it's a program that uh, it's got lots of uses. What I generally use it for is uh, they give you 30 days to um, use the program, and I use it to make sure our computer is running stably and uh, within good temperatures. So yeah, there's tons of stuff to this program. Uh, what I use it for is under tools. I'm going to start up the system stability test. And by default, it'll check the CPU, the FPU, the cache, and the memory, RAM. Um, you can also get it to test the local uh, hard disks or drives, and also the, uh, the GPU, which is like the graphics processor. So what it's showing me is the CPU temperature and the hard drive temperature. CPU temp, it was looking about 56, and the uh, the CPU usage is up in up in the uh, the 70s. So that's a pretty good temperature. What I want to do is leave uh, CPU, FPU, cache, and memory checked. I'm gonna hit start. And what this will do is it'll max out the usage of the uh, the processor and the RAM. 
see it went up to 100% and it'll stick there pretty much. And then what I'm looking for is the, uh, the temperature the, uh, the CPU is at, which right now is 56 degrees C. And that will most likely go up a little bit and I'll also hear the fan spin a little bit faster. Right, so it's been running a few minutes. Um, it's gone up to 58 degrees C on the processor and that's okay. And it's going up and down a little bit between 58 and 57. The uh, cooler is definitely working. The fan is uh, not very loud, so I think we're in good shape here. Um, what I'm going to do is um, contact the client, let them know that that worked, and uh, offer them an upgrade on the uh, from a hard drive to a solid state drive. And it looks like they've got some software on here that could use uh, some cleaning up, some old versions of uh, antivirus uh, that don't need to be on here. And there's a couple of them. So basically just a good computer cleanup and hopefully a um, upgrade from the hard drive to the solid state drive. But um, that's how you replace the cooler on a uh, HP Beats laptop. Thanks for watching.